As we briefly conclude, G.K. Chesterton tells of a story of a boy who found a lamp. And what do you do when you find a good lamp? You always rub it, of course. And a genie came out. And the genie gave him two options. Would you like to be huge or would you like to be tiny? Well, we are all swayed by the appeal of being big and strong and powerful. So it's no surprise he said, I would like to be huge. The outcome was predictable. In a few hours, the boy was bored. He could walk the earth with just three steps. He got to the highest mountain in a second. Swimming into the depths was no challenge for him. He was huge. Like any child, 30 minutes after all the presents are opened at Christmas, he said to the genie, is this all there is? Chesterton goes on to say, only tiny people can celebrate and enjoy life. Only people who recognize what they don't know. Only those comfortable living within their smallness. Reminds me of the words of my rabbi. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the small ones. Blessed are the tiny people who have nothing to prove, no score to settle, and blessedly no one to impress. Tiny people who approach each day not from power or a need to dominate or defeat, but from respect for the sovereign God who holds us all. Tiny people who are feel, fueled by gratitude and who have the freedom to give grace and to receive grace openly. In every decision, in every relationship, in every conversation, that there is an abundance of grace. Tiny people see God hidden in the everyday. Habakkuk is a really unusual prophetic book, this focus for today. It never addresses the people of Judah directly, which is strange for a prophet to not speak directly, but instead it's a recording of this prophet's conversation with God, that God says, I'm going to judge you. And so this prophet has this conversation. Habakkuk, who was probably a contemporary of Zephaniah and Jeremiah and possibly even Ezekiel and Daniel, Habakkuk says repeatedly in this book, though I may not fully understand, I rely on the wisdom and the way of God. He realized that justice of God takes time to unfold and that God may have issues, ways to resolve issues that he could have never imagined. That God is worthy of Habakkuk's praise and worship. Because even after this whole entire dialogue, the book ends with praise and gratitude to the sovereign God. The name Habakkuk is derived from the Hebrew verb embrace. It means he who embraces or he who clings it's an appropriate name for both the prophet and the book because he had a firm faith even as he voices his questions and discusses his doubts with God, he embraces and is embraced by the sovereign God. The key phrase in the book, the righteous will live by faith, chapter two, verse four, summarizes God's plan and it's repeated three times in the New Testament. Habakkuk, was squarely focused on the one who is great, so he could be small. Habakkuk 3, 17, verse 17 to 19, in the context of gratitude, hear the trust and resolve to live aware of his smallness. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. I love that Habakkuk's trust is not dependent on circumstance. He is treading on the heights 
That is the heights of the earth where the, the soil is sharp and unforgiving, where his feet would have hurt. But he says, instead of changing the terrain, God changes my feet so that I have the feet of a deer, so that I can stand. It's not that it's not hard, but God gives me the strength to handle it. Habakkuk lives tiny. Tiny people, G.K. Chesterton says, are only those who can appreciate and live with gratitude. How about you and I? Gratitude and giving come in the midst of smallness. We feel that we have so little to offer, and yet in that smallness and the dependence on the sovereign one, God receives it and multiplies it. He does something beyond what we could imagine. Gratitude and giving comes from tiny people who realize that together each tiny act, each small thing, creates a massive movement of grace. And for that, we can all be grateful. Thanks so much for watching. We're glad to have you here and a part of this community, and we pray for you regularly. To support this ministry, we would love to have you subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified every time we post new content. Another way to support is to go to our website, azurehills.org, and click on Give so that your donation can make a difference in furthering this message and this ministry. We appreciate you so much.